Hey guys, it's Val. Today we're going to be playing a game, Who Wants to Be a Murderer? So this game is supposed to be somewhat similar to the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the TV show, but this is supposed to be a darker version of it. So yeah, let's check it out. I thought this sounded pretty cool. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's go. Warning, sensitive content, simulated violence, ever, I didn't read it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, one and all, to the twisted spectacle that is our game show. Today, my viewers, we have a most intriguing cast of characters lined up for your entertainment. But enough from me, let's dive right in and meet our first participant, shall we? And now, from the bustling metropolis of Chicago, where truth is a commodity bought and sold, we welcome Sarah Thompson, a journalist diligently seeking the ultimate scoop. <laughs> Good evening, viewers. Let's have some fun and games, shall we? She's a bitch, I can tell. From the concrete jungle of New York City where dreams come to die, we have the enigmatic Richard Greystone, a man whose legal prowess is matched only by his moral flexibility. Yeah, the voices! Greetings, esteemed guests. It's a pleasure to grace your screens with my presence. Let the games begin. Next up, straight from the unknown, with the skill and determination of a true gamer, our wild card participant, Val. Hey there. Let's get this game started. And of course, our final contestant needs no introduction, hailing from the foggy streets of London, where whispers of the occult echo through the night. We have the inscrutable Edgar Darkwood, a man whose secrets are as numerous as the stars themselves. Oh. Greetings, mortals. Let's embrace the unknown together. And there you have it, dear viewers. Our motley crew of contestants, each with their own dark desires and ambitions. Ready to do battle in this arena. So sit back, relax, and prepare yourselves for a journey into the heart of madness. Let the games begin. Okay. So this is the first phase of the show. This is where we separate the wheat from the shaft, the knowledge seekers from the mere mortals. In this round, your gray matter will be put to the test and every correct answer will swell your coffers by a handsome $10,000. Now, without further ado, let's delve into the depths of the unknown, shall we? Time to shine, Val. Questions here. What is the medical term for the fear of being buried alive? I know claustrophobia is like um, being in a tight space, being scared of that. Necrophobia? No. I don't know what these two are. I'm going to do this one. And the answer is... Oh, it was right. Taphophobia, the fear of premature, intermittent, keeps coffin salesmen in business and the dearly departed on their toes. Six feet under never sounded so claustrophobic. See, I thought it could have been claustrophobic too, but that's not technically what it is. All right, Richard, it's your turn. What is the name of the mysterious phenomenon in which groups of people exhibit collective hysterical behavior, often leading to outbreaks of irrational behavior or violence? St. Vitus Dance, Stockholm Syndrome, Mass Hysteria, and Ergotism. Wow, I don't, I don't know some of this. This is going to be chance if we win. Mass Hysteria, right? Oh, wrong. Mass Hysteria, where the only thing more contagious than laughter is fear. Remember, folks, keep calm and carry on unless everyone around you is losing their minds. It's your turn, Sarah. Ready? What is the name of the mythical creature said to lure sailors to their doom? Oh, it's a siren. <laughs> it's not a kraken. It's a siren. Why couldn't I got that question? Wow. Good for you, Sarah. Yeah, yeah. Edgar, your question awaits. What is the phenomenon known as when a corpse appears to move or grow hair after death? That happens? Dead moves. Terminal lucidity. It's not rigor mortis. It's gotta be the cadaveric spasms, right? I mean, isn't that the same? That sounds <laughs> what was the first answer? 
Yeah, that's wrong, Edgar. You don't know shit. Also called postmortem spasms can sometimes cause the appearance of movement or hair growth in a corpse after death. Whoa, I learned something. Okay, that concludes our first round of mind-bending questions, folks. And with that, we'll be taking a short break for our sponsors. But don't wander off, my lovelies. When we return, it's time for a bloody exciting game. And remember, there's no cutting corners here. Well, except when it comes to the minigame. But the knife, of course. What? My dear contestants, we're off the air for now, but fear not. If you need anything, anything at all, you know where to find me. Just don't keep me waiting too long. And I... I'm gonna talk to you. I don't know if I can do this, Val. I'm scared. What if I mess up? What if I get hurt? You're stronger than you think. This game may be tough, but we'll get through it together. You, you really think so? Okay, Val, let's do this. Ready for the knife game? Just remember to take it slow and steady. No need to rush into anything risky. With this knife game coming up, who knows what'll happen. I heard Sarah's not handling it too well. Makes you wonder if she'll make it through in one piece. <laughs> Damn! So Val, are you ready to continue or do you need another moment? Uh, I'm ready, I guess. Yeah. Let's dive back in. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back on air. Before we dive back in, here's a quick shopping tip. Snowy's Wish, an intense boss battle to the last snowball against Santa Claus himself. Yours to enjoy absolutely free. Now it's time for our first mini game of the evening, where the contestants' courage will be put to the test. Let's see if they have what it takes to handle a little knife play. Here are the rules. Contestants will have 30 seconds to score as many points as possible. They must touch the table with the tip of the knife, avoiding any mishaps with their hands. At the end of the timer, the contestant with the lowest score will be the first to face elimination. Okay, let the games begin. Oh. Oh. Oh my Jesus. No, I'll get every finger. Wow, that's harder than it looks. Oh Jesus. Oh, everybody got way more than me. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. The unfortunate soul who is bidding us adieu tonight is none other than... It's me! Okay, I got it that time. Oh, well, I guess Sarah's going bye-bye. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for, the first elimination. The unfortunate soul who will be bidding us adieu tonight is none other than... Sarah. <laughs> it sounded like a bus all revving up. Things got serious. Now the game truly begins. Here we are. Let's continue with the show. We're diving straight into our second round of questions, where the contestants' moral fiber will be put under the microscope for all to see. Every answer in this round is th is ten thousand dollars. Okay, so feel free to speak your mind without any inhibitions. Let's see who will rise to the occasion and who will falter under the weight of their own conscience. Get ready for some thought-provoking questions, folks. Val, your question awaits. You can bring someone back from the dead, but another must die. What's your choice? So you can accept, leave fate to decide, reject, respect life's sanctity, a revival of one, or sacrifice a stranger for selfish desires. Mmm. We're going to hell for this! I think most people would, most people would sacrifice a stranger to save someone. Like, like say your, I don't know, your mom or best friend or something, they died. Would you sacrifice a stranger? 
I think I I think I would. To be honest. I mean Yeah, I'll be honest, that's what I would choose. Oh, interesting. Life and death, a macabre dance. Who will you resurrect and who will meet their demise? Let's hear it, Richard. Questions up. A colleague takes credit for your work. How do you address the situation? The answers are discuss calmly, spread false rumors, let it go and focus on better work, or take credit for their work too. What would you say? <laughs> spread false rumors. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Office politics, the true sport of champions. Will you play nice or take the Machiavellian route? I don't know what that word is. Ah, uh, Edgar, here's the question. You witness a crime, but you are offered a large sum of money to remain silent. What's your response? How much money, though? And what kind of crime? The answers are accept the bribe and stay silent demand more money for your silence, report the crime to authorities, or refuse the bribe and do nothing. Report the crime to the authorities. Wow, what an upstanding guy Edgar is. Oh, interesting. To speak or to profit from silence, a moral quandary ripe for manipulation and deceit. All right, folks, that wraps up the second round of questioning. And my, my, have we peeled back some layers. Now we've got a glimpse of the real deal, the raw essence of each contestant. They've sized each other up, and believe me, they're sharpening their claws for what's to come. The voting phase is up next. Stay tuned. After this short break, we'll reveal the two finalists of the Twisted Little Game. And for you out there watching at home, don't forget to call our toll-free number to join us in the studio audience. There's always a need for fresh faces. Yeah. Voting, eh? Well, well, well. Things are about to get interesting. The shadows deepen. Well, folks, it seems we're off the air for now. If you need to know when we're back, you know where to find me. Just don't keep me waiting too long. Ooh, are they going to vote me off because I... Because of what I said? Watch your back, mate. Trust is a rare commodity in these parts. So it's come down to this, huh? Tell me, should I trust you over the other contestant? Yes. Edgar, the champ, he's a trouble for me and for you. I'd be, it'd be risky for you to face off with him in the finale, wouldn't it? How about we vote him out and clear the path for us? Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So Val, are you ready to continue? I am ready. We're gonna vote off Edgar, the little dark weirdo. He's like a spooky boy. Welcome back, folks. We're live again. Before we dive back in, here's a quick shopping advice. Looper, the last mission, a small arcade shooter where you're trapped in a time loop and battle against your past selves, and it's available at the incredible pro incredible price of zero dollars. Oh, are these the games that this developer has made? I'll have to check that out. It's time to induce our next phase, the voting round. Here's how it works. Each player will cast their vote on who they believe should be eliminated. The contestant with the most votes will be out of the game. Now, to avoid any unpleasant deadlock situations where everyone gets a vote, in that case, all participants would be eliminated and there'd be no winner. So think carefully, including who you believe others might vote for. Who would Edgar vote for? Oh, he was telling me not to trust him. But what if what if he is telling the truth? You know what? I, I don't know. Edgar did tell me to be careful who to trust. But Richard said that he would vote him off with me, so that'd be two votes for sure. You know what? I I trust Edgar. I, I think he might be right. Maybe he's a liar. I knew it. And finally, the champ, Edgar? Oh! Alright, we have a winner, or should I say an eliminated contestant. Dang it, I knew it, Edgar. Yeah, peace out. All right, folks, we're getting closer to the grand finale of the show. 
And that means the questions are getting a bit more serious. Each correct answer in this final round will earn you a whopping $25,000. But enough chit chat, let's dive right into the last round. Let's hear it, Val. Questions up. What is the approximate volume of blood loss that typically leads to death in an average adult human? Ooh. Okay, I know um, that's probably not it. 40 to 50 seems kind of high. Okay, it's 40 to 50. I, I, I looked that up, sorry. And the answer is, yay! A delicate balance. Lose 40 to 50% blood, fade into the abyss of death. Edgar, here's your moment. What is the minimum core body temperature required for human survival? I think it's... B? Oh, okay. Good for you. All right, folks, it's time for our last commercial break before the grand finale. We're going to be in a duel. My dear contestants, last chance to catch your breath. Hope you're all handy with a shotgun. I'm sorry, but even you can't escape the inevitable. Good luck. Wow, Edgar, I thought we were friends. It's that time we've all been waiting for. Are you ready to face the final showdown or do you need a moment? Let's do it. Hopefully we can win. Let's dive back in. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back on air. We are about to find out who will be the winner of this exciting night. Before we dive back in, here's the last shopping tip. Minesweeper Reborn, a modern reinterpretation of the classic Minesweeper with updated graphics and a new gameplay mode. And guess what? It's absolutely free. I mean, who's the fool paying us to, to promote these, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's this dev's, like, other games that he has. Ladies and gentlemen, an esteemed finalist, perhaps by now you've grasped the, es the essence and purpose of this spectacle. In the initial phase of questioning, we tested our contestants' knowledge, then their courage in the knife minigame. In the second phase of questioning, and in the voting, we probed the morality of the players and the coldness required to choose to eliminate another individual. In the final phase of questioning, we assessed whether you know the method and if you've made it here. You have all the cards on the table to be true murderers. There's just one final step to truly define yourselves as such. Action. And so, in this last phase, you'll be armed with a shotgun in 30 seconds of time. Whoever manages to take out the most people from the audience will be the new champion of this dazzling episode of our game show. People volunteered to sit in these seats. Let the festivities begin. Stop moving! Stop ducking. Alright folks, it's time to announce the winner of tonight's thrilling episode, but before we do, let's give a round of applause to our brave contestants for their um, valiant efforts. Now, without further ado, our champion, or should I say our murderer, is none other than... It ain't me. Damn! Alright, that was, that was pretty fun, and really creative actually you should check this game out it's on itch.io and it's free unless you want to you know throw a couple bucks at the developer for such a refreshing idea and maybe you can win because i didn't tell me what you thought down below and we'll see you guys in the next one